15 minutes after 8 o'clock at WAKR, and it's time to go to film school with our film study professor, Juan Joe Fortunato. And today, <laughs> we're going back. Matter of fact, I just watched this movie about a month ago because it's one that I love the cameos, I love the appearances, the cast. It's just downright funny. It's a mad, mad, mad Mad World from 1963. Joe, good morning, and why don't you, my friend, take it from there? Well, good morning, Ray, and Happy New Year to everyone. And today we are going to celebrate the new year with one of my favorite films. It's a mad, 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 mad world from 1963. In fact, it was released on November 7th, 1963. So we're celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. Uh, It was directed by the great Stanley Kramer. And it stars almost too many to mention, but amongst <laughs> its stars, Spencer Tracy, Milton Berle, Sid Caesar, Buddy Hackett, Ethel Merman, Mickey Rooney, Jonathan Winters, and pretty much everybody that's ever been involved in American and British comedy, for that matter. <clears throat> and uh, it's just one of the all-time uh, memorable films. And it, it's, it's, uh, it was listed as the, um, in the uh, AFI's top 100 funniest American films. It won one Oscar for Best Sound Effect, and it was nominated for a bunch of others for mostly technical things. Uh, it ended up grossing $10 million in 1964, so it was actually the second highest grossing film that year, so it did pretty well coming out. Um, I, the reason that we're not doing this on the anniversary of November and we're doing it here for New Year's is kind of a personal one because uh, for some reason I always associate this with New Year's because when I was a kid – uh, I saw it on New Year's Eve on Channel 43 here in Cleveland. <laughs> now, I don't remember if that was a yearly thing that they did or if it was just a one-time thing that I remember. But for some reason, it always seems like a New Year's Eve movie to me. So uh, it's our New Year's Eve, or it's our New Year's choice to, to kick off the year. So the film, as I said, was directed by Stanley Kramer. Uh, its original title was called Something a Little Less Serious, which was a reference to Stanley Kramer, who had a reputation as a uh, producer and director of uh, important message films like Inherit the Wind and Judgment in Nuremberg. And then later after this film, he would do uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and things like that. Uh, Stanley Kramer, so he wasn't a comedy director, is my point. Uh, and later he would claim that this was the most difficult film he ever made. Uh, and just to kind of a, a case in point to that, when the film was made in 1962, uh, there was about 100 stunt performers in the United States. About 80 of them worked on this single film. Um, so for those who like big body <laughs> physical comedy and action, uh, this movie certainly for you. One thing that I like is the cameos in that movie, Joe. I mean, you can go from the Three Stooges, from a number of other people that dart in and out of the movie. How about getting all these cast members to kind of leave their egos out the door to play their specific role in this movie? Well, that was absolutely correct. And and the billing for all these stars was a huge problem with such a large cast of famous names, like you mentioned. Uh, Stanley Kramer finally decided to give Spencer Tracy top billing since he had the biggest it was the biggest film name in the bunch uh and he's ostensibly the lead character in the film um but the 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 comedians were all listed in alphabetical order uh followed by supporting players sort of billed in the same way <clears throat> the only one that didn't conform to that credit ranking was jimmy durante he wanted to give him special mention to com- compensate for the the brevity of his role um but uh the, you know even in the opening credits the names people might remember. There's animation of all the names being uh, constructed on screen, and then hands move them around. So there's even sort of a, a nod to giving everybody their role. Um, you know, we talk a lot about casting on, on movies, and this one's a little more difficult because there's so many people. It's not about so much who was in it as almost who was left out of it. So I have a, a kind of a laundry list of, of things that might interest you. Jack Benny's cameo. Uh, was originally offered to Stan Laurel. But Laurel turned it down because his best friend and partner, Oliver Hardy, had died uh, in 1957, and he pledged never to perform again. So he kept that promise. So Stan Laurel uh, wasn't in it, and Hardy had passed. Um, the uh, uh, Jimmy Durante was cast 
as the crook who dies in the opening scene because he felt that the actor's face could be both funny and tragic at the same time. Um, so more things that almost didn't happen. Edie Adams almost didn't accept the role because her husband, Ernie Kovacs, who was also going to be in the film, uh, had been killed in an auto accident a few months earlier, which, is, of course, is tragic. Don Rickles wanted to be in the movie but was never asked. And he never let Stanley Kramer live that down, even mocking him from the stage whenever Kramer uh, would see Rickles uh, in his show in Vegas. George Burns was offered a role but declined. Groucho Marx was originally written in as a doctor, uh, and then that role was written out. Lucille Ball, Imogene Coca, Martha Ray were also suggested for the female leads. Uh, Bob Hope was to have a cameo in the film, but they couldn't argue about uh, his contract, and um, the studio ultimately... Uh, didn't let him appear. And um, the one great person that Kramer didn't even approach was Charlie Chaplin, the greatest one of all, perhaps, um, because he thought it would be impossible since Chaplin was living sort of in a self-imposed exile in Europe, and he was so wealthy that no amount of money would have lured him back to the screen. Judy Garland was going to be in there with Mickey Rooney, uh, kind of harkening back to their days when they did films together. Uh, but uh, she uh, was doing production on her show and couldn't and had to turn down the part. Um, Peter Sellers was going to be in the role as uh, the colonel, but uh, he wanted too much money, and that role went to Terry Thomas. So there's a whole host of great comics that weren't in the film that were asked or, or at least uh, considered. If you get a chance, go back and watch it again. I think it wears well because it takes you back to a funny time of so many of the greats. It's a mad, 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 mad world from 1963. By the way, number 40 on the American Film Institute's list of 100 years, 100 laughs. Great film, great job by our film study professor, Joe Fortunato at film school today here in WAKR. Joe, my friend, good talking with you again. We'll get back together next Friday morning. Thanks, Ray. There you go. Joe Fortunato joins us Fridays on the Ray Horner Morning Show, 93.5, 1590, WAKR.